guys, go ahead and open your reading textbook up to page 508. Um, we're starting a new chapter. Remember, we're skipping around, so we're not doing the one right after Dear Mrs. LaRue or Man's Best Friend. We're doing another one. Uh, make sure you also have your vocabulary notebook open, and you are should be on a, on a brand new, clean page um, because we're starting a new chapter. This chapter is called The Sea. So the top of your brand new page in your uh, vocabulary notebook should be titled The Sea and then you should have today's date. So let's look at this picture on page 508 and 509. And I'm gonna read the talk about it and I want you to think about these answers. We're not gonna talk about them. I'm not gonna give you, uh, you're not gonna check them. It's just these are your answers. If you could explore under the sea, where would you like to go? What would you want to see? So I want you to think about that for a second before we continue. If you need to pause because you wanna think a little longer, Go ahead. I see these girls are, they look like they are um, snorkeling in some kind of large body of salt water. And we can see that they have uh, little animals that look maybe a little like sea urchins in their hand. So where would you want to go? And what would you want to see? Okay, let's go ahead and turn the page. And we're going to do, with vocabulary, we're going to do what we did last week. So I'm going to introduce the vocabulary words. I will write the list on the board. Then you will pause this video, use the glossary at the back of the book to find the definitions, and then come back to the video. You know what you're supposed to do. You need the word with the part of speech as well as the form. Is it a plural noun? Is it a singular noun? Um, is it a past tense verb? Whatever, but it says that in the book, and then you need the definition. You do not need to write the uh, syllables or show the syllables. You do not need to write the pronunciation guide, and you do not need to write the word in context. However, you do need to read all of those so that you get an example of how you might hear it. So the first word is coral. C-O-R-A-L. The second word is the word reef, R-E-E-F. The third word is the word partnership. P-A-R-T-N-E-R-S-H-I-P. The fourth word is the word current. C-U-R-R-E-N-T. Make sure you are copying these the with the correct spelling, otherwise you will never be able to find them. They are also in the book on that, book, on that uh, bookmark that says vocabulary. Okay, number five is the word eventually. Eventually, E V E N T U A L L Y. Let's see, let me put this to the side. Um, the sixth word is the word brittle. B R I T T L E. And the last word, which we've actually learned before in social studies, but do make sure you still get the definition, is the word suburbs. S-U-B-U-R-B-S. Okay, so right now go ahead and stop this video. <clears throat> Use your glossary to define these words. Remember, write the part of speech, the form that it's in, if it tells you, and the definition. You do not have to show the syllables, you do not have to write the pronunciation guide, and you do not have to write the word in context. But do read all of those so that you can have a better idea of what each word means. As soon as you're finished doing that in your vocabulary notebook, then come back to this video. Okay, so now that you're done finding the definitions of these words, we're go we'll go ahead and read the story. What we're going to be looking at specifically is um, we are going to look at comparing and contrasting. Remember? To compare means you're showing what's the same. To contrast, that means you are showing what's different. And we are going, oh, actually, before we start, let's read this box at the bottom of page 511, because that's going to tell us more about the skill we're reading. It says, compare and contrast. Authors sometimes organize a selection by comparing and contrasting two or more things. Comparing is telling how two things are alike. Contrasting is telling how they are different. 
A Venn diagram, which I have an example of up here, can help you analyze text structure. So what we're going to do is on, so you're done with your vocabulary, go to the next clean page, that's probably the back. So go to the back of, this, of the sheet of the page where you wrote all of your vocabulary words. If you did have to write on the back, then go to the next page because you need to be on the next clean page because what you're going to do is normally you look at your notebook like this, but you're going to turn it on its side so that the rings are at the top. Now that the rings are on the top and you have your blank page right here, you are going to draw this picture. Now, so you're going to draw two circles. Make sure that they are big and they take up the whole page. Also make sure that you have enough room to write some facts here, in the middle where they meet, and over there. As soon as you are done drawing that picture on the back page, or on a clean page in your, in your notebook, make sure it is very close to these so that you can find it easily. We will go ahead and I'll tell you how to use this. So the way you use a Venn diagram is, you have one object. So this circle represents one object, which as we read this story, we will find that one, we are going to be comparing and contrasting soft corals, which means everything in this circle will be about soft corals. Then we are comparing and contrasting them with hard corals. So everything in this circle will be about hard corals. So, in this part, that looks kind of like a Pac-Man or um, a partial moon, we are saying how soft corals are different from hard corals. Everything in this Pac-Man or partial moon will be what is different about hard corals from soft corals. So in each of these Pac-Mans will be information over here that only works for soft corals and information over here that only works for hard corals. In the middle where they meet, this little ellipse in the middle will be what is alike about the two. So you see the circles meet right here. So everything that goes in the middle will be characteristics that both soft corals and hard corals share. So as we're reading, we're going to be filling in this Venn diagram, which you should have. You'll be filling it out in your notebook. Um, I couldn't find this. I should have looked before, but I didn't think about it. So now you're just going to draw it on your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and read on page 510. Make sure you're reading with me and make sure you're filling out your Venn diagram as we go. Coral Reefs by Mindy Smith. Coral comes in a variety of shapes, colors, and sizes. It can be the size of the head of a pin or a foot in diameter. Although corals are often mistaken for rocks and plants, rocks or plants, they are often they are actually very small animals. When thousands of these animals are grouped together to form a mound or a tree shape, it is called a coral colony. Thousands of these colonies make up a reef. There are more than 700 kinds of coral, but only two main types. Each kind of coral is either a soft coral or a hard coral. So, so far, in those first two paragraphs, we haven't really seen what's different between soft corals and hard corals. It has only been talking about corals in general. That means that everything that we've read in these first two chapters, I'm sorry, these first two paragraphs, is how soft corals and hard corals are alike. Otherwise, it would have said soft corals are like this, hard corals are like that. So let's go ahead and pick out the facts from those first two paragraphs that show how, how soft corals and hard corals are alike. Well, the first thing it says is that both types come, oops, in many, make sure that you're writing small enough that you can fit all this. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit all this, but we'll try. They come in many shapes, sizes, and there was one other, 
and colors. That's what I thought, but I wanted to check. So those are three traits that goes with both soft corals and hard corals. They come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. Another thing that is alike about both soft corals and hard corals is that they are often mistaken for plants or rocks. We know that that's the same for both of them because it just said corals are often mistaken for plants or rocks, not soft corals only or hard corals only. That means they are both mistaken. And then right after it says that they are actually small animals. So we know that is another thing that is alike about them. They're both small animals. Otherwise, it would have said soft corals are small animals, but hard corals are just rocks. And that's not what it said. And then the last thing that we know right now is the same, is that they live in colonies. That's where that last sentence of the first paragraph, which said that thousands of these animals are grouped together to form a mound or a tree shape called a coral colony. So, so far, we know that soft corals and hard corals are the same because they come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. They are mista often mistaken for plants or rocks. They are actually small animals and they live in colonies. Again, we know that because it did not, it did not designate which one they're talking about. It just said, corals in general, and then it told us there are two different kinds. So let's keep reading to figure out if we can find how they are different. The easiest way to identify a hard coral is by its appearance. Okay, so this first sentence of this paragraph is about hard corals. Remember the first sentence of a paragraph is a topic sentence, which means that everything that comes after has to do with that topic. So that means right now we're gonna be finding things about hard corals. It so far has only mentioned hard corals, which means whatever it says is probably not going to be a, something that the soft corals share. A colony of hard corals can resemble a vase, a plate, a little tree, a boulder, a brain, or the antlers of an elk. Well, that's not something we can write yet because we already know that both types of coral live in colonies that can have different shapes. So let's keep reading. Hard corals have groups of six smooth tentacles around their mouths. Hmm, that's a new fact. That means this is most likely something that is specific to hard corals. So let's go ahead and write it. Because we're using pencil or dry erase, we can always go back and erase it if we find out that it's the same for soft corals and we need to move it here. But for now, let's go ahead and put it in the different column because it's only saying this for hard corals, and maybe later we'll figure out if it's the same or different for soft corals. So, they have, oops, they have groups of six, need to put every single word, but we know that hard corals have groups of six tentacles. We'll keep reading this, uh, pat this uh, selection to see if we find out if this is the same or different from soft corals, but for now, it seems like it might be something different. Otherwise, they probably would have included that information before they started talking about the different types of coral. They get their names from the hard cup-like skeletons of limestone that they produce out of seawater. So that's another fact that, um, that may not be about soft corals because otherwise it would have put it here and it does sound different from what we've heard about both of them. So another fact that might be, that is most likely different is that they have hard skeletons. I especially think that that might be only true of hard corals because they are called hard corals. A soft coral does not sound like something that would have a hard skeleton. Let's keep reading. Soft corals always have eight feathery tentacles around their mouths. Now we can say for sure that while hard tentacles have groups of, I'm sorry, while hard corals have groups of six tentacles, 
they are different from soft corals because soft corals have groups of eight tentacles. So that's our first thing we can say 100% is different. Hard corals have six tentacles, soft corals have eight tentacles. They have names like sea fan, sea whip, or sea fingers and are as soft and bendable as plants or tree branches. Soft corals do not have hard skeletons. Well, there we go. So now we know for sure that this is something that is different about hard, about hard corals. So that sentence before tells us that soft corals are soft and bendable. So unlike hard corals, which have hard skeletons, soft corals are soft and bendable. You'll notice that each time I have something that is different, I show something like that on both sides. So my first point is that hard corals have six tentacles, soft corals have eight tentacles. My second point is that soft corals are soft and bendable, not bendable, and hard corals have hard skeletons. So each of my facts have something to do with a fact on the other side. Okay, let's keep reading. They have woody cores that support them instead. Soft corals often live on coral reefs along with hard corals, but soft corals can also live in cool, dark regions where hard corals would die. So that's another thing that's different about them. Soft corals can live in dark, cool places, whereas it says that hard corals can't do that. So we could think that hard corals we don't have to write because we know we're talking about um, uh, we know we're talking about hard corals. So hard corals must live in sunny warm places. Now something that is alike about them is they both can live in sunny warm places. So let's add that to alike. Because it didn't say that soft coral couldn't live there. It says soft corals often live on coral reefs along with hard corals. So that means they can both live in warm sunny places, but the difference is that soft corals can live in dark, cool places as well, while hard corals must live in sunny, warm places. So that can and that must is what makes them different. Hard corals don't have a choice. Soft corals do. Okay, let's keep going. Hard corals cannot live as far from the surface as soft corals because hard corals have plants called algae living inside of them. So that means this is another thing that is different. Hard corals have plants living on them. That's why they need the sun. Through this partnership, the algae provide most of the coral polyps food and the polyp gives the algae protection from the predators that eat them. So what that means is that the al that coral can constantly be eating um, that algae while the coral protects the algae from other predators like little fish that eat the algae. The algae though requires sunlight in order to live and that is why hard corals have to live in warm sunny places Otherwise, that, uh, that algae that helps the hard coral to live cannot survive. Hard corals begin their lives as fertilized eggs. These develop into soft larvae, which drift with the current of the waves until they attach themselves to a part of an existing reef. Eventually, the coral polyps die and other living larvae attach themselves to their skeletons. So that means hard corals begin as just a little fertilized egg and they drift around until they attach to an already, um, an already grown 
hard coral, and then they grow from there. Scientists believe that the existing coral reefs began to grow over 50 million years ago. When seaweed, sponges, giant clams, oysters, starfish, and brittle stars die, they serve as the foundations upon which another generation of hard coral polyps will attach and grow. So as this old sea life is dying, that those little um, fertilized eggs of the uh, hard coral can float around and it can attach to it, and that becomes kind of a base that it grows out of. In this way, the hard corals are the architects, architects of the community, from the downtown area out to the suburbs. Now let's call it an analogy. Corals don't actually have downtown areas and suburbs, but what that means is that the uh, coral kind of grows from this one big, uh, already established area of sea life, and then it can float, when it's a fertilized egg, it can float out further and start new little colonies. The sprawling structures of the coral reefs support a quarter of all known sea animals. This includes over 4,000 different kinds of fish, along with mollusks, octopus and squid, sponges, algae, seaweed, shrimp, sea turtles, and sharks. So even though these hard corals are an animal themselves, they also provide homes for all of these other sea creatures. Um, because the way that they grow, they have little protected areas that fish and other sea creatures can swim into, and that they can use that to protect themselves. Okay, so that's it for today's story. So we talked about comparing and contrasting. Remember, comparing is telling what is alike about two or more things, and contrasting is telling what is different. So you are going to use what you learned about comparing and contrasting to complete um, part of the homework. First, so open your packet up, pass the math, uh, the conversion chart, uh, anchor chart, and then first you have vocabulary homework. So the first part, you need to complete each sentence with the correct vocabulary word. And then the second part, you have to choose, let's see, what does it say? You have to choose five of the vocabulary words and use them in three sentences. That means some of these sentences will have more than one vocabulary word and some will only have one. Because you need to choose five out of this, but you need to put them into three sentences. So again, you will not have five sentences. One or two of your sentences will have more than one vocabulary word in it. And then one will have just one. So what you can do is, number you can have one sentence with three vocabulary words, and then two sentences that only have one word. You can have uh, two sentences that each have two vocabulary words, and then one sentence that only has one. So those are your choices. But you cannot have, you have to have at least one um, vocabulary word in each sentence. Some of them will require more than one so that in the end, after you write these three sentences, you can underline five different vocabulary words. But remember, only one sentence per number. So number eight, you have one sentence with uh, one, two, or three words. Number nine, you have one sentence with one or two words. And then number 10, you'll have a sentence with one word, okay? If you're confused about that, please reach out to me later today. Then on the back, you are going to read this box at the top, the directions, and then the passage, and you are going to use the information in the passage to first compare sharks and dolphins. That means you're showing how they are alike. And then you will use the information in the passage to contrast how dolphins and sharks are alike, which means you will say how they are different. Okay, so that's it for reading today. If you have any questions, please reach out to me later on between 1 and 5, and I'll help you out.